Hi, I'm George from Delta Hydrofoil. I'm working with Kyle, the OK Kite Boarder, to help people out there set up their foils so they can get the absolute best performance they can from whatever gear they've got. I'd say the first place you want to start is that if you're riding with straps or you're riding on a very short board, um, you really need to get your foil positioned properly with respect to your feet. Ideally, what you're looking for is to have even pressure on both your front foot and your back foot. If, for instance, at normal riding speeds that you typically ride, you're feeling that the front of the board is always pushing your foot up, that the board's always trying to rise out of the water, then obviously you've got too much front foot pressure and what you want to do is you either need to move yourself further forward with respect to the foil or you want the foil to move further back with respect to you. So there's a mismatch and what you need to do is you need to move that wing towards the foot that's not getting the pressure. So that's the number one thing. If you're riding strapless, that sort of eliminates a problem as long as you have room to move on that board and the board isn't too short. So um, in certain situations, uh, some foils and some boards just aren't a good fit and no matter how far forward you put that foil, it's just not gonna feel right. Uh, at that point, you have to commit to maybe changing out the kind of board you have or switching to a different foil um, because you've kind of reached their limits. So every person, depending on their height and their weight and the type of speed that they ride at, will have a different ideal position on the board uh, with respect to the foil. If you have your, your setup totally dialed and then your buddy tries it and your buddy weighs 20 pounds more than you, it's not gonna work for them. And the reason's very simple. Um, in order to compensate for the weight of the rider and the rig, the wing of the hydrofoil has to ride at a certain angle, the angle of attack through the water. And the higher that angle is, the more lift the wing produces. Uh, so if a heavier rider is on a board and they're riding at the same speed as a lighter rider, they're actually going to be riding more nose up. The nose of the board will be higher. The wing will be going through the water at a higher angle of attack. But what that does, since the wing is at the end of a long strut, as it rides at a higher angle of attack, the wing actually moves forward and it'll create excess front foot pressure for that heavier rider. So if you have a rider that's 150 pounds and the foot straps and the foil position's perfect for that person, they're going 17 miles an hour, they've got absolutely even foot pressure. And now they're so stoked on their Delta Hydrofoil, they want their buddy to try it. Well, their buddy is 230 pounds, he gets on this board, and now he's riding at an entirely different angle. The, move, the wing has shifted forward five or six inches because of the change in that angle of attack. And all they feel are heavy front foot pressure. They come back to the beach, says like, man, your foil sucks, bro. That foil's no good, you gotta get something else. Uh, the reason is simply that there's a different difference in weights between the riders. And I believe that there could also be a difference due to height, because a taller rider will have the wing up higher in the air, and that'll cause more down pressure on the nose of the board because the drive will be coming from higher up. Uh, so that can also change where you're ideally be positioned on the board. So once you've gotten that first rough tuning cut done, where at your normal riding speed, you've got even front and back foot pressure, the next thing we wanna think about is maybe tuning the stabilizer of the foil so that you maintain that even pressure over the entire speed range that you're likely to be riding. Um, so typically what happens, uh, and a lot of foils are tuned this way right from the factory, is that when you're riding at moderate speeds, everything feels fine, but then when you really power up and you gain more speed, so maybe instead of going 15 miles an hour on your wing, now you're going 20, maybe even over 20 miles an hour, 
all of a sudden at that higher speed, the trim of the, the board will change. And normally what happens is uh, you're getting more front foot pressure. The, the, harder, the harder you push, the faster you're going. The board is just trying to lift you out of the water and you're just pushing with your front foot to control it. And uh, it's not a very comfortable feeling. So the second thing we need to do is to adjust the stabilizer angle with respect to the front wing so that we have absolutely neutral trim over the entire speed range. And what you need to do is you need to shim the stabilizer um, so that it has less downward pressure. So you need to uh, basically lift the leading edge of the stabilizer slightly with respect to the fuselage. So if you have a stabilizer that can be adjusted, what you'd want to do is take a little piece of uh, expired credit card or gift card or something like that and cut a square of it that you can slip under the leading edge of the stabilizer in front of the front mounting screw and then put that in there before you tighten the stabilizer down. This is assuming that your stabilizer is on top of the fuselage. If it's on the bottom of the fuselage, it will be opposite. You'll have to put it behind the trailing edge. Um, and what that does is, as you go faster, the stabilizer will not be producing as much downforce on the back of the fuselage as it used to, and you won't have that front foot pressure developing at high speed. The other thing that's going to happen is that the hydrofoil is going to feel more lively and be a little bit less pitch stable. It'll be more responsive in pitch. Now, someone that is just getting into the sport might not like that feeling and they're probably also not the type of person that's going to be pushing for a lot of speed uh, so you know having your foil set up that way that it does have more front foot pressure as you go faster is probably okay for a beginner or intermediate rider but as you want more and more performance and you have better and better control over your foil i would definitely recommend reducing the stabilizer angle in the back and experimenting with it. Um, maybe start with putting one shim and then put two shims on top of each other and maybe three and just see what it feels like. Experiment. I mean, this sport, there's, there's no rules. You can do whatever you want, see if it works and, uh, you know, get that foil feeling exactly the way you want it to. The third thing that you can do to really improve the performance of your hydrofoil is to take a look at what the surface finish is on it. Um, most hydrofoils come out of the factory with sort of a satin finish. Uh, some are glossy, uh, but a lot of them have kind of a clear spray coat on them. And uh, many times the surface finish on the wing, which is the most important, but also on the strut, is not very good. It's rough. Uh, and this certainly will make your hydrofoil a lot slower. So. Um, if you don't mind doing a little work with your hands and you're, you're not worried about changing the appearance of the foil because certainly it's going to look different after you sand it than it did before, uh, I would recommend that everyone uh, wet sand their foil. So there's a fairly straightforward process. You know, you, you go to an auto, uh, auto finishing place or uh, a hardware store, you get yourself a few different grits of wet and dry sandpaper. I would recommend uh, 360, 400, and 600, and, and even maybe 1200 if you really want to get the smoothest possible finish. And you get a foam block and you simply sand the surface of your wings and your strut. Start with the 360, go to the 400, then go to the 600, and get that as smooth as possible. Uh, and also what I would recommend is that you really take a look at the trailing edge of your wings and your, your strut. And if they're excessively sharp, which unfortunately some of the hydrofoils that I've seen being sold are, uh, that you take a hard wood block or a hard plastic block and some 360 sandpaper. And you wanna take that sanding block and you wanna be careful not to cut your hand because if you're rubbing back and forth and that trailing edge is sharp and it, it hits your flesh, it'll cut you. So maybe wear um, a leather glove or something. And you want to take that sanding block and you want to sand the trailing edge of the wing, the stabilizer, and the strut to about the thickness of at least a credit card and maybe two thicknesses of a credit card. And just square it off flat 
And then you want to take that block, maybe a foam block, and you want to round the edges of that square edge that you've made. And this will give you, and then go up to 600 or 1200 with that foam block and get it absolutely smooth and make sure that there's no nicks in those trailing edges because that's the dangerous part. If you get that very, very smooth, then even if it hits you and it rubs up against your skin, it might bruise you, but it's not gonna cut you open because there's no serrations in the edge and it's, it's rounded and it's smooth. So I think there's a plus side in terms of doing the trailing edges in safety and in terms of getting just a smooth surface rather than a slightly rough surface, uh, there's a huge performance advantage that you'll see the resistance of the foil go down There'll be less vibration, less noise, and you'll just enjoy your foil a lot more. So the three points are basically move your straps to the foot that has more pressure or move your foil towards the foot that has the less pressure. Um, adjust the angle on your stabilizer so that you maintain even foot pressure over the entire speed range. So you're trying to eliminate front foot pressure increasing on your front foot as you speed up. And then the third point is make the surface of your hydrofoil as smooth as possible by wet sanding them, paying special attention to the trailing edge to eliminate any nicks or imperfections or cracks in the trailing edge to make that trailing edge smooth so that you're not gonna get cut. Um, I think if you do that, you, you can take any hydrofoil that you own and really increase the performance and get the most out of it that you possibly can. Um, if you're interested in Delta Hydrofoil, you can check us out at uh, deltahydrofoil.com or at Green Hat Kiteboarding. Um, we're dedicated to making the best foils we can for winging and kiting.